Amazon Linux 2023 is the latest and greatest offering from AWS in terms of a new Linux distribution. Amazon Linux 2023 or in short AL 2023 is more security focused and developer friendly. It is a next generation of Linux from AWS and it enables you to develop and run cloud and enterprise applications in a secure, stable and high performance runtime environment. With this new generation of Linux, you get an application environment that offers long term support with access to the latest innovation in the Linux. Another good thing is that AL2023 is provided at no additional charge. Now let's have a quick look at the top features of Amazon Linux 2023. First and foremost, there will be 5 years of support, but it means as you will be getting the major and minor releases and patches from AWS for 5 years. And if you are running any Linux workload, you will appreciate how cool is that so that you won't have to worry about the end of life for your Linux servers. Then Amazon Linux also support new files for your platform identification and that will be very handy for any scripting or automation you are doing and it also helps in naming and versioning. Another good thing is that Amazon Linux optimizes boot time to reduce the time from instance launch to running the customer workload. These optimizations span the AWS EC2 kernel configuration cloud init configurations and the features that are built into packages in the OS such as KMOD and SystemD. As I said before, Amazon Linux 2023 is very security focused. By default, SC Linux or Secure Linux is enabled and it is set to the permissive mode. And in the permissive mode, permission denials are locked but are not enforced and you can change it as per your requirement. Just to recap, SE Linux is a security feature of Linux which was primarily disabled in Amazon Linux 2 but not in the Amazon Linux 2023. And Amazon Linux 2023 is a successor to Amazon Linux 2. Another security feature of this new Amazon Linux is that it features the Open Secure Socket Layer version 3 which is a cryptography toolkit and it also uses SSL version 2 and 3 and also TLS version 1 network protocols. And it also supports some of the other cryptographic standards. By default, any instances launched with the Amazon Linux 2023 AMI will require the use of instance metadata service version 2 only and your default hop limit will be set to 2. So, and this will also be handy for your containerized workload support. Okay. Then we have something called as de deterministic upgrade for stability feature with this new Linux. With this a new feature of deterministic upgrade uh, updates through version repositories feature, every AL2023 AMI by default is locked to a specific repo version. And if we can use this deterministic upgrade to achieve greater consistency among package version and updates. Each release, major or minor, includes a specific repository version. Another modernized and uplifted thing in this new Linux is that it is solely based on Fedora, but it's not really directly compatible with any particular release of Fedora. Whereas the predecessor Amazon Linux 2 was built on several upstream sources, including the Fedora. Amazon Linux uh, 2023 also has an improved AMI root file system and it supports multiple systems. And if you remember, the Amazon Linux 2 only supported the XFS file system on the root. Another enhancement is that the system D dash network D system service manages the network interfaces in this new Linux. This is basically a change from the previous Amazon Linux 2, which uses ISC DHC client or DHC client. Amazon Linux 2023 has also got some improvement to the core packages like glibc, gcc, binutils, and few others. Another good thing about this new feature is that now it is by default using the software package management tool DNF or the dandified yum. 
and then there are various other security and application related features in this Amazon Linux 2023. For example, we have more extra packages uh, for enterprise Linux, Linux like ePEL. Um, also, the cloud init manages a package repository in this new version of Linux. You can also have some default changes in your SSH server default configuration. And then the list goes on. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, but this was just an introduction. In the subsequent videos, I'll be presenting you with more hands-on data and how to connect to this AL2023 and how to use the different features. I hope this was useful. If you have any feedback or questions, please put them in the comments. Thank you.